Hello. Hello, everyone. All right. So let's start. It's the almost 11.50, so good time to start. So unfortunately, this talk was meant to be me and Thomas, or Thomas and myself. But Thomas had a small accident, so he couldn't be here. So he's here in spirit. He's good. He's doing well. It's just, uh, you know, bones take a while to uh, repair. <laughs> All right. So today we're talking about a project that uh, we're uh, working on, Thomas, myself, and other people at, at Lightning in collaboration with NVIDIA, as we point out uh, in a few slides. And it stems from this observation that is known to you know, most practitioners. Uh, when you need to optimize training or inference, uh, you need to somehow do something to computation. So if you optimize because you go distributed or because you need to minimize latency in inference, you need to change the way uh, things are computed. And you can do it by acting on the source code. Uh, and of course, if you are mediated by a framework, you will be kind of limited to what that framework allows you to do. Uh, you can use a compiler, like Torch Compile or XLA, or Torch Compile with an XLA backend. Uh, there are many possibilities nowadays. And so you provide your source code to a compiler that will produce fast code because it will fuse things or uh, um, manipulate the computation for you. Uh, and everything you do is really, if you really push the boundary for optimizations, it's going to be model specific. It's going to be implementation specific. So I'm going to optimize Llama 3, but uh, I could use LeetGPT or Hug and Face Transformer, and things are expressed in different ways. So the things I'm going to do to that competition will be different. Uh, there will be hardware specific. If I need to optimize inference on an L40 compared to an A100, A100, I will need to uh, hit different uh, trade-offs. For example, uh, GPU might, might have uh, a smaller memory bandwidth, so I need to work against that and optimize against that. And it's topology specific, so how, it, like, if I'm training, uh, training multi-node, uh, how is my uh, network laid out and how many GPUs I have on one single node and so on, and how uh, interconnections are. Um, and so often performance comes from having control over these things, uh, trying to know exactly what I'm going to optimize for in what situation and going for it. And so some of the, thing, the other things you can do is fusing, is using different precisions in different parts of the model, uh, uh, using specialized kernels that might fuse or not fuse or just be faster, uh, and then uh, managing distributed, overlapping communication and computation and so on. And again, the, all this is very specific. And so if you look at how at the story at how projects like Llama C or uh, sorry Llama CPP or LLM C by Andre Carpathy got fast. Um, I'm not saying faster, slower in this talk. Uh, I, it's just the process of having a basic implementation and making it fast. It's because it gave developers that knew C in that case and they wanted to dig the control of of what they were doing without having to pierce through a thick stack of abstractions. And this is how they got fast quickly and as a community. And it's not because it was C. It was because the, the what they were using allowed them to make decisions at low level, a bit less low level, and so on. Am I going to reuse this memory buffer or not? You know, and these kind of things. Um, and so with this observation in mind, we uh, started developing what is now Thunder, which is uh, roughly speaking a source to source compiler for PyTorch. Um, uh, but uh, in a nutshell, it facilitates manipulating computation uh, manually or automatically and try to keep the stuck thing. So when you get a model and then you get um, the uh, computation in front of you, you can transform it using uh, automated transforms or manually, but then you have full control of what's going to execute and where. Uh, this, as I mentioned, is uh, developing collaboration with NVIDIA. You can go to GitHub, it's all open. You can pip install Lightning Thunder. It's you know fairly early days, so don't expect everything to work. Um, but we're working pretty actively at it every day. So the way Thunder works is you take an NN module, actually any pro PyTorch program, not necessarily just a module. It can be a function or whatever. Uh, we generate a trace out of it, and we'll see what a trace is. 
then we have a series of composable transformations that you can layer one after the other that transform this trace into something else. And then this trace can be partitioned up and uh, sent to different executors. And the executors can be Torch Compile or Torch Eager or MV Fuser and others as a, uh, or sorry, <laughs> custom Trident kernels. Um, okay, and I would just want to mention this interpreter.py because it's really uh, um, something you don't find uh, usually. So the, the, um, the way we acquire the program, so we let the NN module run, but instead of running it with CPython, we implemented a Python interpreter in Python so that we can hijack different parts of the Python interpreter to generate this trace. And this means that we capture everything, including, I don't know, global variable changes. So if you ever use JAX, you know that JAX cannot see global variables and what happens in them. And we see everything. We see loops, we see context managers, exceptions, and so on. So it's very powerful. Actually, if you want to understand how Python works under the hood, what CPython does to your things, I think this is a good thing to, to read. It's about 5,000 lines long, but it's just one file and will actually do have the exact semantics of CPython. Uh, anyway, then the trace, uh, how the trace is composed, uh, you know, you go from NN module, which is a object-oriented land type of thing with state, stateful, and so we have a we decompose it into a prolog, uh, which goes from object-oriented to functional, and other things. It does um, uh, checks to invalidate the cache of, so you don't re-execute with the Python interpreter written in Python because it's fairly slow. So we cache a lot of things and the prolog is, is um, uh, needs to understand if the computation that was captured is still valid or not. And then the computation, which is a purely functional expression of, your, of what's happening in your model, and then the epilogue that wraps things up back into object-oriented land. Okay, so we'll see Thunder in action. Uh, we'll just run through a simple MLP. We'll see a, a fused Triton kernel and we'll run it, um, and we'll replace a couple of operations in the, in the model with a few Triton kernel, really quickly, because this is lightning talk. So this is our model, very simple, sequential, linear, ReLU, linear. Um, and we invoke Thunder. Um, we need to create an input, a sample input. We run the jitted model uh, through and uh, the, the input in the JITED model. And then we visualize what we call last traces. And there's a bunch of them because we acquire a trace and then we transform it and we have access to every single pass as you know, very uh, simple to explore um, data structure. And so this is what it looks like. So this is the functionalized computation trace where you can see the linear at the top, uh, there's no bias. And then you see the ReLU and then you see the linear at the bottom. Uh, and what you see in between in the comments is what semantically that operation does in terms of primitives of building blocks that Thunder understands. And so you can express a computation by breaking it up, and this is really helpful also for generating the backward pass, but we'll talk about it briefly later. Uh, okay, so say we have this nice uh, MATML kernel in Triton. This comes from the Hello World in Triton, the, the tutorials. With the one exception that we fuse the ReLU, if you uh, look at if do ReLU result equal maximum, that's the ReLU. And so we fuse the ReLU within the kernel. And now we have a um, MATML plus ReLU kernel that is fused. Great. Um, this is pure Triton. Then we'll need a driver function and, uh, for uh, a launcher for the Triton kernel. So it's just a Python function that takes the tensors in input and runs the kernel with, in a certain grid. And so Thunder allows to extend its executors really easily. So right now we are defining a new executor at the top. Uh, we're going to call it linear ReLU executor. And then we have an implementation of that we call the, drive, the launcher function that we defined at the previous slide. Um, and also we define meta, a meta function. And the meta function informs Thunder of what it does to a tensor. And in this case, it produces a tensor like the input uh, with a given shape. And this informs uh, Thunder, you know, uh, all the things that it needs to know to sim symbolically uh, uh, analyze the shape. And then um, we register that operation, uh, the, that operator in the executor, my linear value. Okay, now 
I said we want to replace uh, the, um, the linear and the ReLU in the trace, and we want to do it whenever we see a linear and ReLU. So this is the way today, but we may make it even uh, more concise in the future. Uh, you can take a trace and just iterate over it. bsim is the bounded symbol. Uh, it's like a function call. So you say, okay, for bsim in computation trade bound symbols, uh, which are all the operations you saw in the intertrace before, so we loop over them, and we say whenever you find a linear, and whenever the consumer um, of that linear is a ReLU, of the, sorry, whenever the consumer of the output of the linear is a ReLU, then create a new symbol that corresponds to my linear, linear ReLU, and just build the, the trace like that. And all the other ones just copy from the previous trace. So we just wrote a transform, that replaces a linear plus ReLU with a new uh, operator that we just, done, just defined. And then we return just the product trace, the new computation trace, and the epilog trace. And this way it becomes kind of easy and that there's a bunch of facilities to help you out with that, uh, to write things that will compose together. Okay, and now we can invoke uh, ThunderJIT again with the transforms that we, uh, we added, the fuse linear ReLU transform, and the executors that we just defined, and we just run the, the model. And now the computation will run with my new Triton kernel. Um, and, the, and we can see the, tra the new trace generated after we torch JIT, uh, sorry, the Thunder JIT again, uh, will contain my linear ReLU function call. And it didn't, mer the, it, it didn't uh, fuse the, the last linear because it wasn't followed by ReLU. So this is a bit of the way you can manipulate computations in Thunder and have full control on, on that. Uh, but of course, we have more transform. We have a grad transform to compute the backward. Um, that integrates with, uh, with PyTorch Auto grad, but it's independent from it. We have autocast quantization of loading, a uh, few distributed uh, DDP, FSTP, tensor parallel, and then CUDA graph. Because everything is a transformation, so we kind of take the computation, put it in a canonical form so that it's easy to transform. Um, and then, of course, we're building out all the transformations. Um, and then after transforms, you need to execute, and we just saw that we uh, defined an executor that we can call. But essentially, we ship with uh, Torch Compile and MVFuser, which are fusion executors. So they will scan the trace and decide what to fuse. We can also partition the trace and assign this patch different parts of the trace to different executors. So we can say, okay, this, you know, Torch Compile is great at fusing this stuff, then I want to use MVFusion for these other things, plus I want Apex cr cross entropy or a Triton cross entropy, and it can mix and match everything. All right, so um, uh, the integration with PyTorch goes further because, yeah, as we saw, you can use uh, Torch Compile as an executor, but also, uh, in the works is that uh, you will be able to use Torch compile, sorry, Thunder as a Torch compile backend. So you will let Dynamo acquire your computation and then have it just express as a Thunder trace for you to manipulate. Uh, and this is an example of how it will work. It's landing right now. Um, yep, yep. So I'm I'm done. Um, look for Thunder in Lightning Studios. We have every Friday a podcast with Thomas. Thomas and I are uh, speaking at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern time about Thunder. We're having a good time, so you know, check it out on, uh, on, on YouTube. And then we have studios that go with it. All right, so thanks a lot. <laughs>